Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you this, this sixth Sunday after Holy Trinity. The order of service is divine service setting three, and we will uh, do that as we usually do. Um, the first hymn is sev- uh, 579, and so we begin with that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, 
And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is the strong strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. To you, O Lord, I call. My rock, be not deaf to me, lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help. When I lift up my hands toward your host, holy sanctuary, the Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts and with my song I give thanks to him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, before Thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father. Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, Graft into our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. 
nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Old Testament for the sixth Sunday after Holy Trinity is written in the second book of Moses, commonly called Exodus, the 20th chapter. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the, third, uh, on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return, O oh Lord, how long have pity on your servants. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. The epistle is written in St. Paul's letter to the church of Rome, the sixth chapter. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, 
he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Beginning with the 17th verse, Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, unless heaven and earth, or until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, unless heaven and, uh, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Everyone who has had the blessed experience of having and raising children learns quite quickly that they came out sinners. There was no need to teach them to be selfish, self-centered, and self-serving. The sinful nature is hardwired into them at the moment of their conception. This is by no means mom's fault. The fault lands squarely on the shoulders of the father, the source. It is the sin of the Father that is the source of this ugly inclination. Remember that Jesus is without sin. He had a mother of this flesh, just like us, but his Father is of heaven. For this reason, Jesus is perfect in every way, perfect God and perfect man. He didn't have a sinner as his Father. Now, it is true that no one needs to teach our children to sin. We can, however, teach them to sin more. When sinners interact with one another, this is always the way it will go, apart from intervention. Sin will increase. The old man, the flesh, coached by the evil foe, will viciously endeavor to preserve himself. The sinner will cultivate an environment that allows him to survive, even flourish. No better way can be found to do this than to surround himself with more, even greater sinners. If everyone around him is just as bad as he is or worse, then the heat is off of him and he can continue on his merry way. It really is an evil, selfish con. Pile the bodies up to conceal one's own stench. This only works for so long, however. Before long, one joins the pile themselves. Jesus, in today's gospel, sees this insanity. One might be inclined to simply get rid of the law and the prophets, which is to say, the word of God, but that will not change anything. Jesus knows this. He shows the truth of the matter. The fact is, to ignore the word of God only makes things worse. Six weeks ago, we heard about the consequences of ignoring Moses and the prophets, God's word. It didn't work out well for the rich man. Not only did he end up in torment, but by his example, he taught those around him, his brothers particularly, to follow in his footsteps. Jesus showed him to be the least in the kingdom. He ended up in the torments of hell. Since the fall into sin, the drive has been to do whatever it takes to avoid the truth. The day you eat of it, you shall surely die. We don't want to die. Now, because we are sinners, it is our sole attention to give every deference to ourselves. Because we are now sinners, our sole attention is on ourselves. We believe we can be our own gods. We believe that we are able to do whatever it takes to survive, even change the truth. Nah, we won't die. We'll be God instead. And so Adam and Eve showed this when they covered themselves with fig leaves and hid among the trees. There's no problem. We got this under control. Nope, nothing to see here. God will 
never know. Shame? What shame? There's nothing for which to be ashamed. As they found out, ignoring the law always ends the same way. Because the Word of God doesn't belong to them, but to God. The Word of God brought everything, visible and invisible, into existence. Nothing of creation has power over it to change it. To change or attempt to ignore the very thing that created and sustains life leads only and always to death. Jesus wants nothing more than for this sad situation to end. He hates to see fallen men run and hide from the Holy Word of God, the Law and the Prophets. Today, once again, He strikes us all. He pierces us through our heart, hell-bent on everything except the one thing that actually keeps it beating. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said. The scribes and the Pharisees on the outside were unquestionably the most pious men on earth. They, didn't, they did everything right. At least that was the impression. For Jesus to say that one needed to be better than the best was an impossible task. If the scribes and Pharisees weren't already doing it, no one could. The point of this was to show that the scribes and the Pharisees weren't actually getting it done. They were being just as effective as those who sewed fig leaves together and tried to hide from God behind trees. There's only one way for your righteousness to exceed the scribes and the Pharisees. St. Paul writes, We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Baptism. Baptism is the means by which you and I gain access to the kingdom of heaven. It is only that way. In holy baptism, you are saved. The righteous God comes after you, strips you of everything you would hide behind and drowns you to death. The old man in you, who frantically frail, uh, flails about trying to avoid death, is killed with sin and all evil desires. He cannot run from God and His Word. The sinner who avoids the Word of God like the plague has the Word of God and the water come after him. It comes after him and holds him under until he stops moving. And then, along with the Word, comes the life-giving Spirit. Along with the Word, there is the Holy Spirit, and He changes everything. What was limp and lifeless, dead in trespasses and sin, is now resurrected to a new life, a new life of faith, a faith that doesn't grab hold of the self, but the Word the Word made flesh. Through those holy waters, sin is forgiven day in and day out. And faith grabs hold of it. Faith is created and sustained by the Holy Spirit and the Word, the Word that gives us gladness and joy beyond telling. The sin washed away in baptism, however, does not just disappear into the ether. Not one iota, not one jot of the law will pass away. Justice must be maintained. The debt must be paid. That debt has a landing spot. It lands squarely on the shoulders, the, the sh shoulders of Jesus. Jesus, too, you see, was baptized with the same baptism as you and me. The difference is that we go because we are sinners in need of salvation. Jesus goes because he is 
sinless and is the Savior. He goes to the waters of baptism and he makes it holy. His word made flesh makes it holy and those who receive it in faith are made holy themselves. The word made flesh enters baptism with his perfect holiness, his perfect righteousness and exchanges it for all the sins of men for your sins. He takes your sin and pays its debt with his perfect life and innocent death on the cross. What you get in return is his righteousness, the very righteousness that does indeed exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. This is how the law and the prophets are fulfilled by Jesus. They are fulfilled for you and received by you in baptism. There is no way any of us can pay the debt we owe. But Jesus, in perfect sacrificial love, has paid it for us. He has given us the benefits of his sacrifice and sealed it on us with his word and his water. He has indeed done it. Receive it. Believe it. There is no other way. His love, his righteousness drives out all fear fear that would drive us into the darkness, to the leaves and the trees, away from the law and the prophets. His word comes to us through preaching, teaching, and the blessed sacraments of baptism, confession and absolution, and the Holy Supper. We do well to receive these gifts. These are the gifts that deliver to us Jesus and his salvation, his righteousness. And as we partake in God's precious gifts of word and sacrament, as we hear, confess, and are forgiven, as we eat and drink Jesus' very body and blood, we exemplify to those around us the necessity of what Jesus did for sinners. By being here in this place of Jesus' promised presence, we teach others that God's commandments are unchanging, good, and even loving. They show us our sin and our need for a Savior. By being here, we teach others where to receive again and again the righteousness that exceeds the scribes and the Pharisees. Here, we teach others that Jesus is the only hope of salvation. It is his bloody forgiveness that is the only key to the kingdom of heaven and the resurrection on the last day. Continue to be here. For great in the kingdom of heaven are those who receive and teach others to do the same. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
We rise for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we rejoice with Randy Zeckmeister, who is here this morning uh, and having recovered from his uh, bout in the hospital and his health issues. We also uh, rejoice with Lynn Flint, who is now in rehab, uh, receiving care uh, in Slinger. We also keep in our prayers uh, Butch Reimert, as, uh, Reimert, as he uh, uh, undergoes some medical procedures, and also his wife, Agnes, as she uh, is recovering following hip surgery. And we also finally keep in our prayers the aunt of Jason Collins, who continues to uh, deal with health, uh, heart issues. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, whose perfect righteousness covers our sins and whose innocent suffering and death frees us from the prison of everlasting death. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have purchased us from the power of sin, death, and the devil through the waters of holy baptism and made us your children. Grant that we may count ourselves as dead to sin and alive to, Jesus, or to you in Christ Jesus, serving our neighbors in love and looking for the resurrection that is ours in your Son. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you gave the law that we might see our sin and know how much we need a Savior. Increase in us true fear, love, and trust in your saving word and your holy name, that we may have no other gods but you. Guide and bless our fathers and mothers, pastors and teachers, as they bring, us, bring up children in the discipline and knowledge of the true faith. Lord, in your mercy. Uphold Joseph, our president, Anthony, our governor, our legislatures and judges, our local leaders, and all who serve in our armed forces. Grant peace graciously, O oh Lord, in our time. For there is no other who fights for us but you alone. O oh Lord, our God, Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray, for, we pray to you for Randy Zeckmeister, Lynn Flint, Ellison Butch Riemert, Agnes Riemert, as well as Jason Collins' aunt Carrie, and all those whom we now name in our hearts. Along with all who are in danger, poverty, sickness, necessity, and temptation, care also for all who are persecuted for the sake of your holy name. Comfort them with your spirit, that in all this they may recognize your fatherly will and finally be rescued in your grace, Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that he would turn from his evil way, ways and live. We flee to you and your mercy in Christ Jesus. Grant that we may ever thus believe and never waver. Grant that in such faith we may worthily go to your altar to receive the very body and true blood that your Son has given for our redemption. That we may ever praise, serve, and honor you and your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we confess that we are poor, miserable sinners with no good in us. Our hearts and our flesh and blood are so corrupted by sin that we never in this life are without sin and its desires. Therefore, we implore you, forgive us our sins. Let your Holy Spirit so cleanse our hearts that we may love your word, abide by it, and by your grace be saved forever. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let 
let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O oh God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You may be seated. The Lord's blessing to you again this morning. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, this week, uh, Tuesday, uh, Monday afternoon, Tuesday, and Wednesday morning, I'll be at St. John's in Racine for a conference for pastors. Uh, I will have my cell phone. I will be driving myself, so if I need to come back north, I will. Uh, but I, uh, I don't want to. <laughs> but, uh, but no, if need be, the Lord... Uh, uh, you need me and, and the Lord more than me playing softball with a bunch of pastors So, uh, <laughs> at, at night. So we uh, look forward to, to that. Uh, also, in my absence, if you would come and harass Jamie all week, that would be great. Uh, as you've noticed, we are in uh, search of a new secretary. Uh, this is Jamie's last week. I guess she didn't like the new pastor. Uh, no, that's not true. That's not true at all. So. Uh, she would be sticking around if I hadn't been your vacancy pastor, that's for sure. But uh, uh, that time has been uh, unbelievable. Um, she is a, a great secretary. I will 
miss her, even though she hasn't been my secretary for very long. Uh, but uh, we are in search of a new one. So if you know anybody, uh, we would love to hear their name, uh, their address, and their phone number, too. Um, and uh, we'll be in contact with them. Um, Tim, do you have anything else to add to that? Very good. Uh, also, a note, I forgot to mention this on Wednesday night. Wednesday the 3rd, August 3rd, there will be no Wednesday night service. Uh, uh, family and I uh, will be going to the Ozaki County Fair before we leave on our vacation. So, uh, so there will not be uh, uh, here service that Wednesday. And then I will be heading up to Minnesota to my homeland uh, to do some fishing and some tubing with the family. So. Uh, but in my stead, Pastor Mark Knuckles, who has recently moved to the area, he is a uh, army chaplain uh, who served for many years in Austin, Texas, and recently worked in the Pentagon and uh, organizing uh, chaplain work. Uh, he lives in Jackson, and he will be filling in. He was here at my installation, so if you look at the pictures, he's the one who has the military cut. So, uh, and so he is. Uh, a great guy, and he will, he will serve you well in my absence. That will be the 7th, uh, that's Sunday. Next, when, next Sunday, we begin a new divine service, divine service setting 4. Uh, so keep that in mind as we gather next week. Uh, any other announcements? Seeing none, may God keep you safe in the palm of his hands until we meet again. God bless.